Hello everyone, it's Shannon here for Waffle Flower Crafts. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to create a very colorful bee valentine. I'm going to be using these Waffle Flower products today. First up is the Rock On Stamp Set. This is a really cute set. It was illustrated by Mike Lowry. It has these wonderful little bugs that are kind of like playing a bunch of different instruments. I'm going to turn one of those bugs into a bee today. I'm going to be using the Rock On Matching Die Set as well. And then to create my sentiment, I'm going to use the Cutaway Alpha Stamp Set. I've got my Misty out here with a little scrap of Bristol paper, Canson Bristol paper, um, mounted in there just a little piece of painter's tape because it's so small, it's easier to hold it in place with the painter's tape than the magnets. And I'm going to pull off the bug that's holding kind of a flag, and there are like three little dots on this bug right on his belly and they kind of make it difficult to um, do the stripes. I'm going to draw stripes on this bug to turn him into a bee and so I am going to mask those little dots off so I don't stamp them. So I've got some um, full adhesive post-it note here so it's completely sticky and I just cut a tiny little piece, a tiny piece to cover up those three little dots and I'm putting it in place here with my tweezers just to get it directly on top of those uh, dots and, and making sure it's not covering up any of the other lines or any other part of the image. I'm going to use Versamark, I'm sorry, Versafine Onyx Black ink here and ink it all up and then pull off the, um, this is important, pull off that little mask before you stamp it. And then when I stamp it here, those I will not stamp those three little dots that are on his belly. And again, I just mask those off because they kind of got in the way or they, they kind of messed up the look of the stripes when I turned it into a B that I'll draw on later. And I'm using Versafine here because I'm going to ink it up and actually do it one more time just because I didn't quite like how it stamped, which is the beauty of the Misty. I can just stamp it right again. So I'm putting that mask right on top and inking it up again with the Versafine and I'm going to stamp it again. Remembering to remove that mask. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> and um, the reason why I'm using Versafine is because I am going to do some watercoloring with my Tombow um, dual brush pens on this uh, little, uh, little bug here. I'm going to heat set it that uh, Versafine does stay wet longer because it is a pigment ink. So I'm just going to kind of um, dry it here with my heat gun and then I'm going to stamp a little bit more onto this bug. Um, the Rock On stamp set has some sentiments, really great sentiments, uh, and a little heart, and these can fit inside of the little flag, which is awesome. But since I'm kind of changing the, um, I'm trying to turn this into a valentine, I'm going to, I snipped one of the sentiments that say, you rock, so I just have the you, and I'm going to place that right next to uh, a heart that comes from the uh, Rock On stamp set. So I'm just positioning these, the heart and the U, the word U, on this little flag that the um, bug is holding. And once I get it positioned in there, I'm going to fold over a Misty and pick up those two stamps. And again, I'm going to ink this up in Versafine. Versafine is a waterproof ink, so it will not move or bleed when I do my watercoloring with the the Tombow dual brush pens. Just stamping it twice just to make sure it's nice and crisp. So now that this is stamped, I'm going to pull it off the Misty and get set up to do my water coloring. Just remove that painter's tape and I will heat set this too. I'll just do this off camera. So all perfectly stamped. I am missing, I do want to put in I heart you, but I don't, there's no I that I can use in the set, so I'm going to actually hand draw the I. So I'm getting all set up here for watercolor. I've got a, a cloth, my little palette, which is just a plastic that my scoreboard came in, and my some water, a brush, and my dual brush pens. I'm going to start with two shades of yellow. So the yellows I'm using is 055 and 933. So kind of a light and a dark. And I'm just going to dip my brush in the water, get that um, marker ink liquidy, a little bit more runny, and then I'm going to start painting. I'm going to speed it up here because um, just so it doesn't so you don't have to watch me paint for um, for several several minutes. But um, I am adding a little shadow there with that darker shade. In the same process, just adding, getting my brush a little wet, and then um, taking that color over to the uh, paper. 
and I'm using very little water here. Last week or a couple weeks ago, I sh I did some Tombow dual brush marker kind of watercoloring, but I applied the marker directly onto the paper, which is one I was probably my favorite way to color. But I wanted to show you guys another way that you can color. You can just um, scribble the ink onto acetate and then pick the ink up from the acetate or the plastic like I'm doing here. So that's another way to watercolor. And you just have a little bit of more of a refined look when you do it this way. So I, and it's easier to get into those really um, fine areas or keep your color in, contained in really fine areas. So I'm going to kind of, um, I'm almost done here. I'm just finishing up the stick and I'm gonna add a little bit more blue just to kind of get this um, banner look like it has some, some movement or some, um, volume. I'm adding a little bit more blue here on the wings too to also improve that uh, gradation. The colors I used, I told you the yellows, they're 055 and 933, those are the yellows. For the reds I used 885847. The blue was 493 and the brown is 977. The brown was on his stick. And I just added a little bit more of the lighter red on his cheeks and this little guy is all done. So I'm going to set that aside and dry actually I'm going to heat set him because I just want to make sure that all that watercolor is dry before I start to add the B stripes so I'm actually going to start I'll sketch this out first before I use a permanent marker so I'm just using a mechanical pencil here and sketching out three stripes on his belly I'm trying to avoid his arm just because that would complicate things so I'm making sure there's no bright black strap stripe um, going over his arm. So I'm kind of doing them between his arm. And then I'm once I get the stripes the way I, I want them, then I will take a Sharpie marker and just kind of color them in. So really simple. I'll also use the Sharpie marker to add the eye next to the heart. So the complete little sentiment on his flag is I heart you, which is cute, especially with the, the completed um, sentiment, so the larger sentiment we're gonna do on the card will say be mine. So I think that's a cute little addition. I went ahead and die cut that out with its matching die. And now I'm gonna move on to my card base. So this is a top folding A2 card base made out of white 110 pound cardstock. And I'm gonna do some ink blending on this card base with some Distress Oxides. And I have six Distress Oxides that I'm using. Twisted Citron, Peacock Feather, Salty Ocean, Picked Raspberry, Candied Apple, and Wild Honey. I'm starting with the Twisted Citron. And I'm actually blending from the the outer tour in and I'm when I'm getting closer to the center I am lightening my pressure and this is just to make sure I want it to be a little lighter in the middle so your eye is kind of drawn into the center of the card so I'm keeping it darker towards the exterior of the card but keeping the interior of the the panel or the front of the card lighter and I'm just moving around here really quickly with all the colors, overlapping them a little bit. Um, it just creates, it kind of it makes the transition from one color to the other more seamless. And you also get kind of a blending of the two colors, which is really nice. Like over here, I'm doing the yellow over the red and it'll kind of create more of an orange. And especially with the blue over the, the pink, you get a nice purple. So I really like blending those colors a little bit um, where they are right next to each other. So now that my ink blending is done, I'm ready to stamp my sentiment. So I have my little bug here kind of in place to help me position because he's going to be standing or positioned right next to B, the word B-E-E. -E. And then I'm going to have mine right underneath. Now I've got the cutaway alpha stamp set here and all, the stamp set only has one of each letter, which is totally fine because we can use some of the other letters that are similar in size since we're to kind of place hold and then we'll move the um, E around to where those placeholder letters are. They are just using these placeholder letters like I've got an F up there at the top for the second E and B. And at the very bottom in mine, I used the E again, so I actually have an L right there. Now don't worry, I'm not gonna stamp these letters. I'm just using these letters to kind of help me, because they're about the same size of the E that I need to stamp two more times. So uh, I'm just using them to help me make sure I get the spacing right between my letters. And I get my top letter, my bottom letter, um, centered 
as well, the whole entire letter. So it's really helpful to use other letters within uh, your alphabet stamp sets that are about the same size as your letter that you need to stamp multiple times to kind of help you get your positioning right. So I've got my letters arranged. I've got to fold my misty over, pick them up, and then remove those letters that I do not want to stamp, which was that F and that L that was just being serving as a placeholder for the E, which I will stamp later. So I'm using VersaFine again. I'm going to ink it up, just keeping it consistent. That's why I'm using VersaFine. It's going to be the same black intensity as it is on the little B, so it's perfect. And stamping it twice to make sure I got it all covered, cleaning everything off, removing everything. So I'm going to remove all the letters that I just stamped and grab that E and position it. First, I'm just going to position it here in that B. Kind of get it close to that E and then ink it up with VersaFine again and stamp it as well. And then I'll clean it off here and then position it for the mine. And then once I get that all centered, I'll fold it over here, pick it up and ink that up in VersaFine as well and stamp that. I really like this cutaway alpha set. I find it really easy to position the letters and get them nice and straight. I use this one quite a bit. <laughs> so now I'm going to um, add some foam tape to the back of the B, just a couple spots. So cut my foam tape here and just pop it right on the back. And I did forget to do, I wanted to do a little um, white gel pin um, kind of like shine on him, especially on the little heart, his wings and on his belly a little bit. So I'm doing it now. I'm just grabbing my Jelly Roll white pen, gel pen here and just kind of adding a line, just one line, kind of a couple lines I should say because I'm adding them to the wings as well as the heart on his belly and this will kind of give like a shine or a glare and it just kind of also increases that, that look of volume or three dimensional look. So now that I've got that done, I'm now going to stick this B on. So I'm going to pull off that um, backing on that foam tape there. And at first I tried tweezers. I'm still getting used to my nails here. So <laughs> um, I'm having a hard time removing these backings with the nails. So I've been trying to use tweezers and that's been difficult too. So uh, bear with me while I adjust to having longer nails. So I peeled off the backing here and now I'm sticking um, the B down. And then the one last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little wink of Stella here and color the bee's uh, wings. There was a little bit of red still on my wink of Stella pen, so I had to clean that up a little bit. I'm going to put a little of that wink of Stella on his cheeks, wings, and the heart. And that is done. I'll hold it up here to the camera so you can see that beautiful little bit of shimmer or glitter that the wink of Stella adds. I really like it. It's hard to tell on camera, but it does, uh, it's much more of noticeable in real life, but it really does add a little finishing touch, a little special detail. I hope you guys enjoyed my card today. If you want any more information on the products I use, please visit waffleflower.com and you can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for more creative ideas. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.